Hello, this is Patrick with Hellstar Home Care again. As you see, I got another unit here. You see alarms going off. And the reason why, it has the dreaded floating ball problem. Uh, the ball is floating up and down, as you can see. It, it's not staying in one position. You can barely hear the purge. It's purging, but you can hardly hear it. But you can, again, see the ball is floating up and down. It's, it's not staying in one position. This is usually caused by the solenoid valve not uh, moving from the two sieve beds side to side. So it's sticking. Um, we're going to try to replace that. And that's what we're going to do with this. Uh, see if that fixes the problem. First, I have to open it up and clean it out. This is the solenoid valve. You can see there are different ones depending on when the concentrator was manufactured. They started with this model. They went to this one and then later to this one. Um, the, we're going to put the, the newest current one in there, which is even after this one. These are the solenoids. They're on top. They're controlled through the computer board. Um, this is the housing. And the housing is pretty simple inside. You can see that there's a spring here. And these little valves just move up and down when, when uh, they get a puff of air from the solenoid. So that they move inside this housing. And they're lubricated. Uh, you really can't rebuild these very well. Uh, some people have tried, I know, um, and they can be professionally rebuilt. But generally, I buy new ones. Okay, the unit's been cleaned out. Now, if you look at the uh, sit beds, we're going to flip them up. And this is where you're going to see the solenoid valve. It's on top of the sit beds. This is the valve housing, and we have to remove the valve housing. And all there are is one, two, three, four, five uh, screws. They're just Phillips. And I'm gonna just use my driver and just remove those five screws. And I'll show you how to remove it from the uh, uh, PCM. Now I removed the five screws. So I'm gonna remove this from the top. You see it just fell off. Uh, this is where it connects to the top of the sieve beds. And here is the valve housing and these are the solenoid valves on the top solenoid valves you got to use a special screwdriver generally a really tiny one if you have one small enough because what we're going to do is remove these top screws kind of hard to see there these top tiny little screws and in the bottom there's a little nut and this screw runs through here to the nut and be careful when you remove the screw that you don't lose that little nut it's a number one uh, nut and they're so you can't find them anywhere. I had to buy them from Respironics So they're really hard to find so don't lose the nut now The problem is if this is a black housing this the length of the screw will be different um, And it gets or the bolt is different and if the bolts different uh, They won't you won't be able to attach these valves to the that housing Generally, this is the problem. It's the housing. It's not the solenoid. Generally, the solenoids are fine. It's in the housing. So I'm going to change the housing right now. This is the screwdriver I'm going to use to remove these, these little, little tiny, uh, tiny heads. And you're just going to take them off. There will be four of them. There are two here and two here. These will come off separately. I removed one. I'm going to go ahead and remove the second one. I've, I've loosened the screws. And all we're going to do is once we loosen the screws, very tiny take it little off. nuts that go on the top of these little tiny little screws. Um, so you want to be very careful uh, when those fall out. You don't lose really hard to find. Okay, I'm going to remove the solenoid on this, the other side. And the solenoid valve, the nuts out, is from the valve. I'm going to show you the nut there. You see that little tiny, tiny, tiny nut. And what I do is I'm just going to spill it. See, it just falls out. That's why you have to be careful. There are the, both of those. So I have the, and I'm going to replace this valve housing. This is a new valve housing. I'm going to go ahead and install this. You can see that on the top of the new valve housing, they changed it a little bit. And what they've done with the new valve housing, they added these little guides on each side just to kind of help you get the solenoid valves in the right position. And 
certain solenoid valves these ones if it's the white ones they should it should work with this one some of the older uh, solenoid valves if it was on a black one it may not fit this solenoid valve because of the holes it has little uh, guides that when you attach the solenoid valve the little screws are going to go right in the sides down here at the bottom and, um, what I do is I drop one screw in or one bolt in at a time with the nut the little nuts are just going to drop in I put the solenoid valve on you can see the wires go to the inside I drop the little nut right here you see a little nut and then the, I drop the screw in there I'm going to tighten it I'll do the same thing on the other side now you can see I've attached both solenoids to the housing on this new valve housing and it's going to be able to, I'll be able to put the valves onto the sieve beds and hopefully these valves will work um, you can disconnect from the uh, motherboard these wires uh, generally I don't have to disconnect them but if I'm just changing the valve housing but if I'm changing the whole solenoid valve with the housing then of course I would disconnect those because you would have new wires um, you just can't buy these parts anywhere uh, they have to come from the manufacturer um, and you have to to get parts from the manufacturer you have to be a DME um, with certified techs uh, certified by the manufacturer so the only way to really get these valves if you if you want to try to get a couple concentrators two or three concentrators you buy them yet yeah, on Craigslist 50 bucks a piece or something they're not working correctly as long as they have different problems you can make one working one um, by changing the parts okay now uh, you can see that I tightened all these screws on the top of the solenoid valve valve housing and what I'm going to do now is you want to make sure these are really snug so I use a regular screwdriver and do them by hand after I get them most of the way in just so I can make sure I can feel that they're nice and snug and uh, if there's any leak in here at all it's not going to work correctly it won't pressure the regular the regulates the pressure coming out of the unit it actually just slides into here in the sieve beds there's a little latch and then you just turn it to get it unit now with the new valve housing you can hear it purging that's the sound that is moving from one side to the other so the valve is working now it's no longer hanging up and in the front you can see that my ball is no longer floating it's staying on the so I'm gonna run it for a while and make sure it runs in that valve and then I'm gonna test the purity and once I test the purity I'll put it on the the computer and I'll check the swing on the valve and see what the pressures are um, from one side to the other to make sure that it has proper pressure to the machine. Well, that's all take parts like this one's being cannibalized for parts and because it's just too dirty. So what I, I'm going to throw the rest of the machine away but I'm going to go ahead and cannibalize the parts to be used um, on other machines. If you have any questions feel free to uh, check out at healthstarhc.com and uh, look at some of the other videos and they'll cover different things but this is the most common problem is that floating ball um, it's because of that valve housing has gotten dirt in it and